What is a chargeback? It's not simply a refund. It's your customer accusing your business of fraud, and it can literally take you down if not handled properly. Managing your chargeback ratio is one of the most important things you can do as a business owner. Later in this video, I'll explain how to calculate your chargeback ratio and what to do if it exceeds normal standards. But first, let's talk about chargebacks. Chargeback happens when a customer disputes a credit or debit card transaction with their issuing bank. Whereas a refund is the act of a customer receiving their money back directly from the merchant after a return. Now, you may be wondering, why would a customer go through their bank for a chargeback instead of just requesting a refund? There are situations where a simple refund might not be an option which can lead a customer to charge back the transaction. For instance, let's say a merchant has a refund policy that doesn't allow returns. In other cases, a customer might be returning an item that can't be resold. Whatever the reason, if a customer feels unsatisfied with their purchase and is denied a refund, they have a right to charge back a transaction for up to 120 days after the item or service is received. And once a chargeback is initiated, it triggers a formal investigation involving the bank, card network, and merchant to make sure the dispute is settled fairly. Now, let's break down the chargeback process into seven steps so you know exactly what to expect. A customer initiates a chargeback by reaching out to their card issuing bank. The issuing bank uses the card brand network to reach out to the acquiring bank and informs them of the chargeback. Then, the acquiring bank notifies the merchant about the dispute. At this point, the merchant has a choice, accept the chargeback, as is, or challenge it. If the merchant decides to challenge the chargeback, the acquiring bank steps in. They review the evidence from the merchant to make sure it meets the minimum requirements for a chargeback challenge. The issuing bank then reviews the merchant's chargeback challenge and makes sure the evidence is valid. Now it's the moment of truth. The issuing bank reaches a decision regarding the outcome of the chargeback, and both parties are notified. If either the customer or the merchant isn't happy with the chargeback decision, they can escalate the case to arbitration. Basically, an independent third party, usually the card network that facilitated the transaction, steps in, looks at all the evidence, and makes a final decision about the dispute. Chargebacks can happen due to simple misunderstandings, factors beyond your control, or the occasional slip up on your part. Regardless, it's not always a reflection of your business. To help you better understand why chargebacks happen in the first place, let's dig into the three main types of chargebacks. First, there's friendly fraud. But don't let the name deceive you, there's nothing friendly about a high chargeback ratio. Friendly fraud happens when a customer unintentionally initiates a chargeback, whether they forget a purchase that they made, or they just don't recognize the billing descriptor on their statement. So they charge back the transaction. Next, we have merchant error chargebacks. These happen when a mistake is made on the merchant's side, like shipping the wrong product, or double charging for a single transaction, or a merchant otherwise making an error that warrants a chargeback. The third type is True fraud. This happens when someone uses a card that isn't theirs to make a purchase, leaving the actual authorized card holder with a chargeback as the only way to get their money back. Chargebacks were introduced in the first place to protect card holders who fall victim to these exact fraudulent activities. Chargebacks can have a significant impact on your business. At best, they can result in revenue loss, additional fees, and potential damage to your reputation. At worst, excessive chargebacks can lead to the termination of your merchant account. Because I don't want you to lose your merchant account, and you certainly don't want to lose your merchant account, let's talk about what you can do upon being notified about a chargeback against your business. Just as every customer is entitled to charge back a transaction, every merchant is entitled to an opportunity to present their case and defend their business against a chargeback. If you're able to provide solid proof that the customer did, in fact, receive a refund or show with substantial evidence that the chargeback was invalid, the dispute will probably result in your favor. However, not all chargebacks can be successfully disputed. If a customer can prove that the product was not as described or they did not actually make the purchase, like say their card information was stolen, this may be a chargeback case you just have to take the loss on. All right, so here are the two ways to calculate your chargeback ratio. Number one, simply divide the number of chargebacks by the total number of transactions within a specific period. Or, 
Number two, divide the dollar amount of chargebacks you received in the same period by the total sales volume. Per Visa and MasterCard's guidelines, exceeding a 1% chargeback ratio is grounds for termination. This is because oftentimes, businesses with high chargeback ratios are unreliable and untrustworthy. There's one sure way to keep your chargeback ratio in check, and that's by preventing them from happening in the first place. To prevent chargebacks, provide excellent customer service, clear communication, accurate product descriptions, and transparent refund policies. These all go a long way to protecting your chargeback ratio. Make sure that the business name that appears in your customer's bank statement is recognizable. Have strong operational systems within your business. This means accurately fulfilling orders and staying in communication with your customers. Set up security settings on your payment gateway. Your payment gateway should utilize tools like data encryption, address verification checks, and other security measures to protect transactions from any kind of fraud. And finally, keep meticulous records of transactions and shipping details. These can serve as legitimate evidence should you choose to fight a chargeback at any point. But even if you diligently follow these steps, you're not fully protected from chargebacks. That's why chargeback protection services are available to help mitigate the risks associated with fraud. For example, Payment Cloud can set up chargeback prevention solutions like RDR alerts, transaction monitoring, and analyzing patterns to identify potentially fraudulent transactions before they become chargebacks. These solutions also assist you in gathering and submitting compelling evidence when disputing a chargeback. For more in-depth information about chargebacks, check out our blog post linked below. Reach out to us if you have a high chargeback ratio or low chargeback ratio, and if you need any help with chargeback mitigation services. Comment down below if you have any questions you'd like us to clear up. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if our content was helpful to you. Until next time, happy processing. Payment cloud. Payment cloud. Chargeback. Two, divide your total sales. Actually, take it back. I'm just going to be more sassy in this. There's one sure way to keep your chargeback ratio in check, and that's by not doing business at all. Well, let me redo it again. Chargeback protection services. Okay, so where do you want it? Like here? Yeah, so up. So that's for one and two? I'm sure we have to do that again though, right?